Hello. During the last speedrun, I was running some incentives for people becoming channel members, the equivalent of Twitch subs. One of those incentives was another speedrun, specifically a viewer's choice dungeon speedrun, which means we'll get to see a dungeon with cool mechanics, maybe one of the early dungeons so we could get a crazy fast time. No. No, of course not, you picked Orem Vale. And so over the past few weeks, I've been running the Orem Vale Synced category, the worst one you could possibly pick. Synced means I have to queue into the dungeon with Duty Finder. No pre-made party, just me. So I had to hope the random players I got in my party knew the dungeon, had a high level, synced gear, were good at their class, and just so happened to be the perfect assortment of classes to get through this as quickly as possible. Yeah, good luck with that one. If you have an idea for something worse than the Orem Vale speedrun, tell me in the comments and maybe subscribe while you're down there. Stuck in my most hated dungeon, we're pushing forward with dreams of a world record. First things first, we need a class for it. Warrior was the plan for its strong AoEs and burst damage, but any tank would do well. Just make sure you do your class quests before doing any runs. This is gonna take me a minute for setup, all right? I'm gonna spend a lot of time trying to figure out what we want to do for this uh, plan-wise. I need to figure out what potions are going to be the most optimal. I need to figure out what food is going to be best. I'll probably buy the resources once we're um, at the dungeon ready to get started. But what is that chess piece you need to know? It's the Bear Liege outfit. The A Realm Reborn I level 110 uh, PvP armor. This armor set right here is the only reason I leveled Warrior ever at all. No insufficient armory space yeah okay let's let's go back and pretend that didn't happen uh equip warrior oh good luck with that why Orem Vale? Fantastic, you asked. I'm happy to tell you we had a funny little incentive going on during the 24-hour stream. We had a bunch of different things that we were doing. One of the incentives was a speedrun of a dungeon. I gave them a poll in the Discord for what dungeon to do, and it was almost unanimously everyone telling me to speedrun Orem Vale. So here we are. <laughs> That's what we're stuck with. Still Cyclone unlocked, it was time for a bit of testing. There was another incentive that I did at the end of the 24 hour stream, but since it's not in a VOD, I'm just gonna show it off real quick. That was to show off my FC room. What do you think? Do, do you like it? Is, it? is it good? Oh God, I love this. A new head touches the beacon. <laughs> It's stuck in my key item slot. I can't get rid of it. It weighs two pounds. Since I was going to be doing big pulls of enemies while going so fast, I needed potions. A quick test showed that the optimal potion for Orem Vale was X potions, so we grabbed some off the market board. Next, we needed to plan our route. The first room was one of the biggest obstacles in the run. I came up with a strategy to avoid the enemies for almost every party, assuming that they're going to ignore my request to go fast and hit things on the way. If I could get to the gate to the boss room, pull the boss, leave all of the normal enemies outside the gate, and survive for 15 seconds, the small and annoyances would be locked out of the room and we could focus on the boss. So that's fantastic. That's that's optimal, I think. That will be an absolutely perfect run if I can get that to go well. I might arm's length on the way just in case. I made a macro to explain what was going on to the party I queued in with and we're off for our first run. But before that, thank you to Sakurako and Tokyo Treat for sponsoring this video. These boxes are your gateway to experience the tastes of Japan from the comfort of your very own home. Oh my god, where did this come from? Tokyo Treat Box for October is the Halloween snack hall filled with all sorts of spooky goodies. Look at the little pumpkin. Hello. I'm pretty excited for this one. Look at the little dudes. All right, so we've got the... No, I'm supposed to be the one eating the snacks, miss. Keep salt and sesame oil potato chips. Oh, those are incredible. They're like very slightly sweet from the sesame. Toasted sesame seed flavored. That's absolutely delicious. These things are my absolute favorite. The crazy Kit Kat flavors. Okay, sweet potato Kit Kat is the special Kit Kat this time. Oh, okay. Look at these little guys. Oh, it's got a little hat. Oh my god. They're basically just a white chocolate marshmallow. This is the most amazing Kit Kat I've ever had. And the Sakurako box for October was made alongside the Kyoto Prefectural Government to show off the beauty of the autumn season in Kyoto's Crimson Leaves. Government mandated box. Super cute little pamphlet. It shows you how they make some of the stuff. Kyoto candy, okay. What is this? Handmade candies. Okay, so they're like little hard candies. I gotta admit, kinda looks like a shallot. It was probably the plum flavor. That's absolutely delicious and I love ginger sweets, so we've got all sorts of fantastic treats and I will admit, I don't know what this box is. Oh, wow. This is 
beautiful. That's not plastic. That's like ceramic or something. How did it make it here? This is incredible. I don't know how they've done it. And Sakura Ko always comes with a tea to pair with all the snacks. It is a very good tea. It's got a nice salty kick to it. If you liked the look of this, you can get these exact boxes by ordering through the link in the description and using coupon code RATH for $5 off. It's a wonderful treat for you or a gift for someone else, and it really helps to support the channel. Thank you again to Sakura Ko and Tokyo Treat for sponsoring. Back on track, macro spamming the chat with tech it was time for our first run. Putting our plan into action, we rush over towards the boss room, pulling the enemies like we did in practice. It was going perfectly so far, until of course we ran into a problem. I wasn't prepared enough for my other parties hitting the mobs in their confusion, and they ended up pulling aggro because I didn't use any AoEs on the first run. Good enough, this is gonna be fine. So one death, and moving forward, we would need to stop our full sprint to boss room to make sure we AoE everything we run past. My party was very kind and didn't seem to mind the crazy wipe, but from here we can consider this a dead run and take things a bit slower while practicing the planned route. The second attempt, I managed to get the gate closing to work, though a few mushrooms stayed in the room with us and I ended up dying. It was almost saved with a res from the healer, but they had taken too much damage tanking the mushrooms and we died yet again. After those disastrous first attempts, we cleared out the first room this time before moving forward. I may very very much be the strep. With everyone making it to the boss room in one piece, Locksmith died in, uh, 5 minutes and 50 seconds. From here, we're past the point we had prepared her out for, so we'd be making up a plan during the run. Grouping up all the morbles for AoEs, the seedlings don't matter that much as only the gold vine has to die for the vines to clear and let us progress. Though I didn't want a repeat of stray enemies killing my party, so everything dies before we move on. We took out the mites before coin counter, and we were on to the second boss in just about 8 minutes. Their first time in the dungeon and I'm making them do a speed- oh, I'm so sorry. I can't make a sprout on their first time in the dungeon to a speed run. No. You're preparing them for future Orum Veil runs. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll take that. That makes it sound a lot better than it is. Some good crits. We do some good damage and we're through. With coin counter defeated, we come up to the worst room in the entire run. Right now, I was ignorant to it, but this single room caused me more pain than anything else in this dungeon. We'll talk more on that later, though, and how stupidly lucky I just was. Clearing out the Diarmites, we're on to the last Marble Room. Once again, the seedlings and morble fruit don't matter, so we pull the second morble out of all of his fruit and fight them both by the door. After the morbles are unalived, there's one last group of mites to kill, and we're on to Miser's Mistress. The only thing you should know about Miser's Mistress is her tank buster. Vine Probe is an AoE targeted at the tank that hits everything in front of her. Aside from that, easy fight, and the speedrun is based on the in-game timer right as it fades out from killing final boss. Well, it's great to see you, Miser's Mistress. With that, our first run is 14 minutes and 49 seconds. 15 minutes as a reference, let's just take a quick look at world record and, uh, yeah, okay, almost half my time. Our ultimate goal, the true run to chase after, was 7 minutes and 51 seconds. An absolutely insane run that I couldn't even imagine getting close to at the time. But it wouldn't be as far away as I thought. Queuing back in for the second run, we try again for my locksmith route. The healer died to a cleave from the boss, and then I saw the real problem with my gate strat. Half of the mobs just walked in anyway. This is a tragedy, but we... Ah, uh, why did it let so many of them in after it closed? And so, another wipe to Locksmith. Why is this the one I have to speedrun? Why have you done this to me? Ultimate Legends trolling people in Duty Finder Classic? I mean, that's all I do. On this run, at least, we figured out the proper route for getting to Coin Counter. There was basically no universe where the party dodges these two Veil Wasps, so aggroing them and the three Diarmites, we start Coin Counter while AoEing the smaller enemies. Okay, so at the very least, we learn off of this run. Coin Counter is, is nothing. The mobs before him, I take the two Veil Wasps, I take the Bane Mites, I make sure I get aggro on them, and then I just step in and start boss with Coin Counter. Coin Counter down, after clearing the full room of Morbles and Seedlings, we're on to the final boss. Just like Coin Counter, we start Mistress by AoEing the smaller enemies right outside her boss room. I can be happy with this run. Fantastic. 1121 is an immediate improvement. The third run, I got my route to work perfectly by staying outside the boss arena and teleporting in. Everything would lose aggro on teleport, and the party would be a lot safer. Except that we didn't lose aggro, and they just walked into the arena again. I'll spare you the rest of the run. We wiped a locksmith. Come on, you can do it. No! I know exactly why you chose to have me do Orem Veil. It's because you want me to suffer. It's because you want me to be in pain. And so I'm going to do the one that puts me in the most pain first. And took down Miser's Mistress in 19 minutes and 54 seconds. This was a bit soul crushing. My route just didn't seem like it would ever work, especially since the enemies could ignore the gate. So we gave up on that strat and tried something new. With that in mind, I decided to, uh, borrow some routing from the world record holder. If I can see what it feels like to get a nearly seven minute run, I think it's all in that first room for me right now.
Okay, the world record takes the mobs in that first room, runs into the boss room, moves them into the boss room, and then kills them before starting locksmith fight. I think I'm gonna give that an attempt for myself. I also set a rule for myself that moving forward, if our healer was a sprout, we'd take things a bit slower. Yeah, no sprouts, we're good. These are real gamers. Now we just had to hope the new route made things easier. We pulled some extra mobs because of an unlucky veil wasp path, but still went for it. We go in here, Fantastic, the frog is gone. And right as they were about to die, we turn and pull the ball. Yeah, when I'm not focused on keeping them out of the boss room, that goes way better. Insanely good start. Just like that, we had our first deathless entrance and an actually viable run, and it got better. The party I was with was incredible. Stupidly high damage, great heals, everything was going perfectly. Managing to take down Locksmith in two minutes and 13 seconds, this was the first run we had gotten it under four minutes and practically half the time of my best run up to now. Oh, I'm liking this one gamers. Adding in a much smoother ad pull and coin counter start, I was fully focused. This was, without a doubt, going to be an amazing run. We don't have a melee LB for final boss, which is unlucky, but that's fine. Coin counter down at 4 minutes and 44 seconds, we're on to the final boss. And this was the first time I realized just how terrible the next rooms were, but I'll tell you about that after the run. Morbles down, we make it to final boss room at 83.19. I think, based on timer, we're a bit slow. It was 7... 50, right? Yeah, so we would have to kill the boss in about 20 seconds, which I don't think is gonna happen. This time, right here was our goal. Killing Miser's Mistress before the instance timer showed 82.10. If I could do that, world record was ours. Not this time, though. And so we end our first god run at 81.32, 8 minutes and 28 seconds. That was an amazing party. What a masterpiece. Killed it before 81.03 for second place. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> With a new route and luck on our side, we had blown past second place's 857. Though, with all that celebration, I was still 30 seconds off of the world record. All to those dire mites from earlier. It was really, that was just a perfect run. I just have to be better. If I didn't stop for, yeah, the pull before coin counter, you're right. Do they skip that? They must skip that for world record, right? Let me pull up that video real quick. Quick. The positions that all of the mobs in those next rooms were looking, they didn't have to do either section. They pulled one of the eight mobs that were there. We had to do all eight of them. World record managed to avoid all of the enemies after coin counter. All of them. Two ghost patrols, five dire mites, and two wasps. Every single one of them was in the perfect spot facing the perfect direction for their party to just walk past. This was the biggest problem in the Aurum Vale run. Your fate was left up to the whims of a few scorpions. Back in for run 5, we remember two final items that we'll be taking for our future runs. Strength pot for berserk damage. I need to do potent poisoning potions as well. I should pick those up. Now that we've got a second place, I should just grab those, right? Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll get them after this then. Strength potions, or tinctures, provide a 30 second boost to your strength stat, allowing for huge bursts of damage. The only issue is they share a cooldown with health potions, so I'll have to rely on my healers if I commit to it. Potent poisoning potions are a bit of a relic from 2.0. We've used them a lot in my solo challenge, and they don't share a cooldown with health potions or tinctures, and they do a set amount of damage to whatever they're used on. Sure, it's not a lot of damage, but it could be enough to push us over the line alongside our strength pots. I'm honestly really happy that so many people are willing to do the speedrun stuff. Orumville sucks, so I think most people are glad to get through it quickly. Yeah, I could, I could see that. That would be the ideal. Not bad. 9.35 is a good time. With tinctures and poison added to our arsenal, it's time to grind out attempts and chase after that perfect run. This is a really good line. I just hope nothing else aggros. This is really good so far. After pulling only the required enemies, it was time to take a risk. Where the world record lost time killing the enemies first before starting Locksmith, I would try to manage this pull with the boss. And it was going surprisingly well. I was healed up with only the boss left until this. That's a lot of, no, that hurts. No, 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 oh, come on, dude. No, no, I can't lose this one. That was so good so far. Come on, get back up. Don't let him die. Hit the, hit the vote button. Recovered and a new personal best for Locksmith at two minutes and five seconds. Even with my death, this was 10 seconds ahead of the 30 I needed to beat world record. Oh my God, this is going so well. And to keep with that trend, coin counter goes down in four minutes and 30 seconds. At this point, we're 24 seconds ahead and it all comes down to the dire mites. Please be lucky, please be lucky, please be lucky. We're so lucky. No, we're not. 
On this nearly perfect run, two of the three Diarmites were facing away, and the last one ruined everything, losing us around 15 seconds. Even with all that though, I still had hope. Entering the final boss room at 83.45, 1 minute and 35 seconds left. But we were just a bit too slow. No, I think that's lost. Yeah, that, that is, that is. Almost. Miser's Mistress goes down at 81.50 and we get a new personal best of 8 minutes and 10 seconds. Dire Mites for 14 seconds, and the death giving us an extra 5 to 6, maybe more. It was starting to feel like hitting the world record was within reach. Just as soon as I could get a clean run. Oh my god. Uh, that was that was so so stupidly good dude getting a glimpse of victory and an amazing run i was energized i had forgotten my hatred for orem vale and almost looked forward to queuing in again next run we had a sprout with the sprout here i will not be doing this speed run we will just be doing this normally and home gang was on cooldown but i died anyway so we can just pretend that didn't happen full health to oh my god 50 50 hp left <laughs> This next one is gonna be it. This next one's gonna be a masterpiece. Well, you can say that in a twisted kind of way, I guess. This next run would set the tone for the rest of my speedruns. The only recurring theme I had. A dead, unrecoverable run that gets perfect Diarmite spawns. We had lost around one to two minutes on Locksmith, so there was no way to get a world record. It was as if the dungeon was toying with me. Just under 10 minutes to kill Mistress, on to the next one. And then, the ninth attempt. We start with a flawless first room, only pulling the lilies and mushrooms. Okay, this is this is a good one. I need to be kind of focused up here. Insanely good start. I'm loving this group so far. Insane damage so far. Locksmith down in two minutes and three seconds, a new personal best. I just need post coin counter to be perfect. That's all I need. Coin counter in four minutes, 27, another PB shaving off three seconds. Then, as if to spite me, all three of the first Dire Mites were facing towards us and we had to pull the next group as well. But I wasn't giving up here. I took a risk, a risk that could end the run right then and there. After doing a bit of damage to the enemies I pulled, I ran forward and started the Morble Room. With a nearly filled enmity list and endless ground AoEs, our scholar pulled off a miracle and kept us alive through it all. With the last group of enemies pulled, we entered the final boss room at 83.58, just about a minute and 40 seconds left. Just gotta hope I can live through this now. We're doing pretty good. Now it's just Mistress. Looking for some huge damage here. And with the melee LB coming in from our monk, this was absolutely perfect, but it hadn't been enough. No, that's just barely lost. Oh my god, I'm gonna be like two or three seconds, dude. Mistress goes down at 82.01, seven minutes and 59 seconds. That was crazy, and that healer was incredible to be able to put up with all of that. My celebration came with some rough feelings, though. Eight seconds off of world record, if we had just gotten good Diarmites, that would have been it. At this point, it's all me, because that was a perfect party. That party would have done it. It was something that I messed up on that I could have done better. I don't know what it was, but there was something. And that's the problem, is that I don't know. Don't punish yourself. It's not It's not about punishing yourself. It's, it's more, if I say it's someone else's fault, I will never get better. Either way, it was an amazing run and a very strong second place. Talking with Chad on how I could try and optimize my route, we continue forward. Run 10 died at Locksmith. Uh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh, just barely. No, not just barely. Unlucky. Run 11 had a sprout. Long cutscene view and they come out as a sprout. I'm not gonna do the run. And run 12 died at locksmith again. Oh god. What the heck? Uh, my fault. My fault. I pulled too much. I've got one more in me for this first day. One more good one. Come on. We can do it. With no sprouts and a nearly perfect party setup, hope was at an all-time high. Oh my god. The perfect line. Huge. Okay. Now we pull boss. This is some insane damage. Am I exaggerating, or is this a super quick loss? Two minutes and four seconds, it wasn't an exaggeration. Stunning coin counter to get my melee some extra uptime, he's down at four minutes and 32 seconds. Now for the Dire Mites. <gasps> no, okay, unlucky. Uh, could you imagine if I didn't have to do that pull every time? 83.50, maybe? We need to get Miser's Mistress down before 82.10. Come on. This is so stupidly close. No, dude. Uh, insanely close run, but same thing as last time. Okay. A final time of 7.58, a new personal best by one second, and a good end to day one. That's really, really good for day one. Uh, we will return to Orem Vale speedruns, maybe on Thursday. Maybe we'll do something else Thursday. Who knows? 
Today, we will continue our speed run attempts at Mr. Orem Vale. We could consider trying out Gunbreaker instead. Okay, so I won't have an immunity. Gunbreaker is easy, just break their guns. The tragedy is I don't think plants are advanced enough to have guns. We take some time to test out ways to get my old route to work to no avail and start our full day of runs. Okay, this is the warm-up one, I suppose, but golly gee willikers, welcome to Orem Vale. Everybody here seems to be normal people. I hope that they are okay with it. And the last. Oh my god, this is it. This is literally perfect. I just need that on a good run. Ooh, that's flawless. This is a good portrait, Mac. What do you mean instant portrait reverted? No. Oh my god. Oh my god. Wait. Wait. Seeing the little sprout do it his best, like there's no problem at all. Like I'm not flinging him through one of the hardest ARR dungeons uh, at Mach 10. Please clean the inventory. Just for you live there. Now I have two spots available. I had a dream about Oramvale last night, and I dreamt of the most perfect Bane Might setup for Oramvale. Oh, it was so nice. Do my retainer inventories look the same as mine? Let's have a look. Yes, 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 yes. What about appreciate it? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, they do look the same as mine. Our final run for the day, we're hoping for the same last pull magic we got on day one. There's a mushroom left, I will destroy him now. All right, come on, Locksmith. I need you to go down really quick. Locksmith down in two minutes and two seconds. It's time for a real attempt. A chat member was keeping track of time goals against the world record run, and to be on track for the record, coin counter needed to go down at 85-25. We've got the double stun from the melee as well, they know what they're doing, they're here for speed. But you can forget 85-25, coin counter went down at 85-38. We can do it, we can do it, please, please Lucky. <gasps> Please no Bane Mites. No, dude. 13 seconds ahead of world record, we're stuck with a bad Mite spawn, but even then, there was still a chance. Entering boss room at 83.56, it was all down to my party's damage. LB went out, and we were inching towards the finish line. The Sage, Monk, and Reaper were shredding the boss faster than any group had before, until the pivotal moment that I haven't stopped thinking about since. Whoa, he's got two HP. What the heck? No, no, he's gonna die. No, 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 dude. Come on. Come on. No way. You've gotta be joking. That was it. That was, that was absolutely it. That, that tied my current PB. Right there at the end, in the last moments, I hit a DPS with Vine Pro. Final time of 758, the damage lost from a death was unrecoverable. I was so close to being free. I was so close. I was so close. I was right there. I was right there. I was, it was a <laughs> To try and cheer up a bit, I took the chance to show off my FC room to chat before ending stream. What? The orb has claimed victims. <laughs> this is a new experience. Congratulations, orb. Your first kills. You just gotta appreciate the orb every once in a while. And so ends day two. And then we're gonna go for a big shot here, and it's gonna be an absolute... Okay. 
Okay, we're flawless. Oh, hello. Hello there. I didn't I didn't see you. I did not notice that you that the stream had arrived. Hello gamers. Welcome to Koopo Koopo Adventure Day. For day three, we swapped over to Gunbreaker to try out the higher damage, but this day was the breaking point. It's painful for me to watch it back, so I'll give you the quick version. Eight total attempts, and of those runs, only one of them had good dynamite luck. The dream. This is amazing. What should have been a perfect run ended up being more than 40 seconds slower than world record. 8 minutes and 36 seconds. And then, at my lowest point, run 8, Orumveil came around to finish me off. Don't show me this on a run like this. Don't show me the diarmite skip. The full- the full diarmite skip on a run like this. The full diarmite skip, and I have already <laughs> taken longer than world record. You can't. So there, Orem Vale, you win. 14 rhinos can keep their world record for now. I submitted the first good run I had, 7 minutes and 59 seconds. It's not the fastest I've done, but it was sentimental to me. It was accepted pretty recently, and hey, I mean, second place is pretty good. A strong second place that will hopefully stand the test of time. But one day, I'll come back for revenge. And when I do, I won't go down so easy.